This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and here's a review you guys and gals have been asking for. This is the Dell Inspiron 13, specifically the 7000 series. This is the high-end SE Special Edition model, but everything we're going to cover is going to actually pertain to the, this standard issue Dell Inspiron 13 too. So what is this? A 13.3 inch Ultrabook and also 2-in-1, so very conventional laptop, but also does the usual tent mode thing, the tablet mode sort of thing. And it works with Dell's optional active stylus that we have right here. And you've seen me use this actually with the HP Spectre X360 as well as some other Dell's latest generation pen. Not like Dell pens from a couple of years ago. This actually works well. And we're going to look at it now. So this is the Dell Inspiron 13. Specifically, this is the special edition model. So you get the rubbery soft touch gray finish here instead of the silver metallic that Dell often uses on their Inspiron series and even on the, some of their XPS models and you get an SSD inside so that's what the big difference is between the special edition and the not so special edition which is still a pretty nice laptop. Optional Dell Active Stylus here it works with it we'll go into that a bit more later much much better than the days of old the first couple of uh, laptops and tablets that Dell used with the first generation second generation and even third generation of the stylus were from horrible to mediocre and now we're looking at something very good that synaptics digitizers come a long way price point starts as low as around oh five hundred and thirty dollars for your base model goes all the way up to our model here which is one of the top of the line configurations and that one is 9.99 so as, as a 13 inch ultrabook with high quality materials and good specs goes that price actually is pretty darn good and compelling it's nice enough looking, certainly in that kind of Dell way. Robust hinges here on the back, and it does do, do a 360 mode thing, so you want to have strong hinges there. And Dell says that they have tested the hinges for 20,000 open and closes to maintain the rigidity and the stiffness that you feel when it's kind of like brand new, you know? So for those who worry about the hinges getting real squishy, not going to happen anytime soon. Pretty slim, 0.75 inches here, fairly stylish. We have the metal and chrome trim going on, contrasting obviously with the matte gray black kind of finish over here. Healthy selection of ports, it's a full 13.3 inch Ultrabook, so we would expect that. We have our lock slot. You've got your charging port right there, full size HDMI, two USB 3.0 ports, and our combo audio port. Front, nothing much. There are some magnets in, inside the cover that help it keep stay tightly shut. Boy, it's tightly shut. It's not going to be a one finger kind of opening deal. Since it can be used as a tablet, we have the volume control and power buttons over here. So even if it's in tablet mode, you can reach them easily. USB 2.0 port here and a full size SD card slot. It's a pretty nice looking machine. Got a nice taper to it. Combination of metal and plastics. Soft touch finish extends to the bottom here. We've got Dell's into minimal ventilation. They kind of do it like Apple sometimes. So we've got our vents over here, and then there's a little thin area over there. Generally speaking, not a problem. When you first set it up and it's doing Windows updates, you're installing your programs, you're going to hear the fan, and it's a little bit of a high-pitched kind of baby vacuum cleaner sound. We noticed that continued on with our Core i7 after two days, and that was unusual. So I removed the McAfee trial, McAfee antivirus. Boy, that's just a devil of a program for using resources sometimes. And once we remove that, boy, much quieter machine, fairly quiet. You can feel some heat here if you're making it work hard, if you're exporting full HD video, if you're playing Diablo 3, something like that on it. Not particularly a gaming laptop, but that'll do it. But anyway, standard Phillips head screws here. Nothing too complicated about opening up. You unscrew all of the screws. They are all visible, nothing hidden under the rubber feet or anything like that. And then you work off the little clips around the side, which is a good way to break a fingernail. But once you've done that, you'll get it off. And inside, we'll show you a picture in just a minute of what you can access to upgrade here. There is one RAM slot. There is a two and a half inch SATA drive bay for either a hard drive or an SSD drive and the usual socketed wireless card inside. Battery then, once you take the bottom cover off, uh, cover off, can be replaced. And Dell said they've even tested the battery connector to be good for 30 insertion and removals, which is pretty interesting they even bother doing that because nominally it's sealed inside. Most people don't disassemble their machines, but after two years, if it starts to you know not have such great run times, it is possible to replace it. And the battery even has a little sticker on it that says, need help figuring out your battery? Go to Dell.com. 
open it up and you've got the brushed metal keyboard deck here very nice large trackpad good trackpad by the way responsive easy to control never once drove me crazy which sadly sometimes can be the hallmark of windows trackpads how much they bug you but it, it actually it worked quite well all kidding aside two stages of backlighting for the keyboard here it's controlled with the backlight key and you can turn it off low high like so it's on the slim side, so key travel, let's put it up at an angle so you can see a little bit better there, is, it's not, it's not huge, but it's not bad either. The keys are very damped. It feels quite nice, you know, it feels right up there with the XPS line, which is Dell's Highliner product. So it's a pretty nice experience, and everything is laid out in a completely normal fashion, which is also always a desirable thing. You can see the keyboard more clearly there, inset a little bit in a tray for slightly improved ergonomics. And the chrome line that runs around here, notice how it even extends over here. It's an interesting kind of like a little design touch that Dell uses. Speakers on this fire out from the bottom, but they still sound pretty good anyway. This is a speaker grill right over here. There's your other speaker grill over there. We'll play some video so you can hear it and also watch it and see how it looks. Machine has a glossy 1920 by 1080 IPS touchscreen display. Obviously, it's glossy. You, you notice a little bit of glare there. 10 points of touch plus is a Synaptics active digitizer to work with the Dell Pen. Since its IPS viewing angles, other than glare, of course, are quite good on it. Our colorimeter measured 290 nits of brightness, close enough to 300 to just say, okay, it's about 300 nits, which is a pretty bright display. It is a good looking display. Honestly, this is a good looking package overall. Like I said, our configuration, which is the SE model 999, that has a Core i7-5500U, so your typical Intel 5th generation Ultrabook CPU in here. Yes, we have Broadwell. 8 gigs of RAM. There is one RAM slot, so RAM now for laptops comes up to 8 gigs. There is one company that makes 16 gig modules intelligent memory, but otherwise you're not going to find anything higher. But for those of you who are really pining for something more, keep in mind it is now possible to go higher than 8 gigs. It has the dry bay inside, like I said, HDD or SSD. Our configuration is a 256 gig SSD, 8 gigs of RAM, Core i7, full HD touch display, obviously with the pen support as well, and that's $999. Not bad for a nice, attractive looking Ultrabook. It could be lighter. That's one thing that would be nice. For something that's a two-in-one at 3.7 pounds, it is not wildly light. If for somebody who wants to use it as a tablet, you're going to be using this pretty much on the desk and not on your arm. It does the tent mode thing with screen rotation. You can put it in presentation position if you want as well, and you can use it like a tablet. 13-inch tablet, big tablet, but then again, it gives you a lot of room for writing and drawing, so no complaints there. Benchmarks are pretty typical for something with an Ultrabook processor, dual-core i7 here, which will be a little bit faster than the Core i5. Now, the Core i5 and the Core i7 in the ULV U-series Intel CPUs are both 15 watts, so you're just really looking at a little bit higher clock speed. Not a wild difference there if you're trying to figure out which processor you need. So you can see where our score here was in PC Mark 8 2826, which is again fitting for the field, fits right in with other machines. PC Mark 7 is scored 4662. I would have thought it would be more like 5000, but you know, you never know with PC Mark 7. It puts a lot of weight on the fastest SSDs possible. And this has a standard SATA interface, not a fast PCIe. SSD interface, and that could be enough to make a little bit of a difference there. Intel HD 5500 integrated graphics. There is no dedicated graphics with this. Generally speaking, most Ultrabooks don't offer it. There's occasional exceptions to that, but... Geekbench 3, you can see the score for yourself. 64-bit test, 2677 for the single core, 5878 for the multi-core. Again, par for the course. We've seen some that approach 6000 or even slightly exceed it, but not enough of a variants to worry. And here's our crystal Dismar speeds for the SSD, which actually isn't bad, especially for a SATA interface SSD, not something wickedly fast in terms of the interface it connects with. Those numbers are quite respectable there. And that SSD is easily upgradable. And if you're thinking about saving some money now and getting one with a conventional 5400 RPM hard drive, the base model has a 500 gig 5400. Uh, most of the lower end models start with that. Well, you can always upgrade it yourself later. It's pretty easy even Places like Best Buy sell two and a half inch SSDs these days that you can pop in, and it's not a hard thing to do. 
Lastly, for W Prime, it computed Pi in 17 seconds, which is quite good score. Now, for those of you who want to save some money and get your standard issue Inspiron 13 instead of the special edition, like I said, the price starts at $530. That's with a Pentium CPU. I don't particularly recommend the Pentium. It is pretty low powered. 4 gigs of RAM, 500 gig hard drive in there. Now, for $730, bucks, you can get one with a Core i5, 8 gigs of RAM, for those of you who are worried about future-proofing your memory, and a 500 gig hard drive. 730 bucks. Not bad at all for the build quality, the ports, and the very good display on this. Speaking of the display, you can see our colorimeter measured at 95% of sRGB, also managed 74% of Adobe RGB. So it's right up there with the top laptops costing well around $1,000 or so. Contrast ratio is 750 to 1. Again, brightness close to 300 nits. So it's really a, quite a nice display. And even more interesting, as I said, just like the HP Spectre X360, it supports the Synaptics pen. So we'll take a look at that. Experience this one feature that sets the Inspiron 13 2 in 1. Apart from a lot of other, well, 2 in 1 Ultrabooks, certainly a lot of Lenovo's that don't have the pen feature, HP Spectre X360 would be one that does. There's also the Acer R13, which has a different kind of design. But anyway, Synaptics Pen, like the Spectre X360, and yes, it's a lot improved from previous Dell slash Synaptics partnerships, shall we say. This is the latest generation of the Dell Active Stylus. Don't get one of the older ones. Get the one that has the silver on the barrel. There's a hint that you got the newest one right there. Active Pen technology means you can rest your hand on the screen when you write, and notice I'm writing no problem there. Works just fine. It's responsive, it's quick, it keeps up really well. In fact, there is no lag whatsoever on this. Pressure sensitivity, not that it matters so much. They're pressing hard, I get a darker line. When you're taking notes, that doesn't matter as much. It works really well, folks. For those of you who are looking to write anything handwritten, fill in forms, do equations, you just prefer to take handwritten notes using the pen. This is, this is the deal, it works quite nicely. Now we're gonna test it in Sketchbook Pro to see how it does with art programs. So now we're in Sketchbook Pro here, the desktop application. Light line, heavy line, nice, very responsive difference there. For those of you who are digital artists, it, it's tracking extremely well. So if, if I wanted to draw something with, without having to make any concession to the digital experience, this is working. I'm really impressed with this. They're going to start matching Entrig and whack them no problem here with the responsiveness of this. A couple of hash marks there fell behind a little bit if you're a really fast sketch artist, but not bad at all. And again, the pressure sensitivity works. I can rest my hand on the screen while I'm doing this. It has no effect whatsoever on what I'm doing. So it does the job. And yes, indeedy, just like it should. If you have it sitting in presentation mode like I do right now, the keyboard is disabled. So is the trackpad, so you don't have to worry about any spurious input. Same thing goes for tent mode. So pretty much like a Lenovo Yoga. Not like the Levisi 360, that unfortunately doesn't have that feature. But yes, you can do it all the time. Uh, the drawback, of course, is for those of you who are bothered by this, is you do have movie clicky keys that you're grabbing onto. It feels a little weird at first, but I guess most of us probably get used to the concept. When it's closed, it stays pretty closed tight here, too. Not much of a gap, but it's not super clamped down or anything like that. And so you can see the difference in finish. This is the Dell Inspiron 15, a higher-end model. Also, this is the standard silvery Dell finish, and this is, well, a much bigger laptop here. It's not the two-in-one either. It's a standard conventional laptop, but you can see the difference in size between the Inspiron 13 and the Inspiron 15. There you go. And here it is with the HP Spectre X360 on top, a, obviously a fairly direct competitor in the world of two-in-one convertible ultrabooks that support the Synaptics pen, similar price range. HP doesn't go down as low they, because the Spectre lines are high-end line. Core i5, Core i7 is what's available. There's no Pentium or Core i3, for example. And you can see uh, the HP is obviously much more silvery. It's entirely metal. I think it's, it's the more styling looking machine. I, I, Looks are in the eye of the beholder, but to me, the, the HP is the more styling one with more metal on it. You can see what they look like here. HP is a little bit thinner. It's also a little bit lighter. Of course, relatively speaking, it's a little bit more expensive as well. 999 gets you a Core i5 with 8 gigs of RAM and a 256 gig SSD versus the Core i7 in our model. So there they are together. And if you're interested in the smackdown between these two, just give a shout out in the comments and let us know and we can make it happen.
So how about battery life? Dell claims eight hours of battery life with a conventional hard drive and up to nine hours battery life with an SSD drive. And that's uh, using a video playback benchmark test. I find that our SSD model really is at around six and a half hours or so of mixed actual real world productivity use with an hour of video streaming thrown in full HD, say Netflix or YouTube, something like that. So it's not a super duper energizer bunny. It's not terrible either. Let's check out the speakers and see how it looks for video playback. Obviously, it's a pretty nice screen. Photographs look good right here. We'll go to our website and let's take a look at our Dell XPS 4K video review. We've looked at a couple of different iterations. In fact, one that has much the same internals inside, but this one has the UHD 66% volume. That's not bad, right? It really is lovely. This is also, well, it comes with the top of the line models. We're going to talk about what you get when you spend $2,000 to $2,500. For those of you who are looking for a 15 inch Retina MacBook Pro competitor in the world of Windows, well, this would be it. And the screen looks good as well. So the speakers are actually pretty darn good, I would say. Certainly for a 13.3 inch machine video playback, nice enough experience. It's a very pretty screen, so it's going to look good there. So, all in all, the Dell Inspiron 13 7000 series is a Real easy to recommend. I mean, it's got lovely build quality. It's very rigid and very sturdy feeling. <laughs> Keyboard is easy to see. Black keys, white letters, always a good thing. Backlighting on it, very nice oversized trackpad that's very responsive. Lovely full HD display. I personally think 1080p is a perfectly reasonable resolution for a 13-inch laptop. And then you don't have to mess around with Windows scaling and all that sort of thing. Get into that whole mess of things. Dual band Intel Wi Fi 7265 AC, Bluetooth 4.0. You got your webcam on here. It's a very good all around laptop with a healthy selection of ports for the money. And beyond that, well, it is a two in one convertible and it supports the pen. So, for those of you who are artists, note takers, anything like that, well, that's obviously going to have its appeal too. And there aren't that many Ultrabooks still on the market that actually support an active pen. So that's the Dell Inspiron 13, available in enough configurations that there's really something for everybody here. If you're looking for something more towards the budget end, you don't want to spend more than 600, 650 bucks, you can get a decent configuration. If you want to go to town and get it with a lot of RAM, a Core i7 CPU, the SSD, all that sort of thing, you can do that too. And still for a more reasonable price than the Dell XPS 13. So for those of you who like the XPS 13, but it's too rich for your blood, this is a very good all around machine. And unlike the XPS series, well, it does that whole, well, you know, 360 degree hinge thing. You got your tent mode, your presentation mode. You can use it as a tablet. Granted, it's not the lightest kit on the block. So using it as a tablet when it's 3.7 pounds, well, yeah, you know, it's a little bit heavy, but you can do it. It's nice. And more practically speaking, you can lay it on the desk while you're using it as a tablet. So then you're not really saying, oh, it's too much for my arm. It's not a problem anymore. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit mobiletechreview.com for our full written review and subscribe to our YouTube channel.